Thanks. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you as we've just sung that you indeed are our shelter. You indeed are our strong tower. Our help every day. This morning, Lord, as we just come and hear from your word today, Lord, I thank you that you indeed will inspire us and encourage us. May we put you at the centre of our lives, Lord Jesus. May we make you a priority, Lord God. Many needs, many concerns, no doubt, across our church and Father God, we, we lift up prayers to you. Prayers of healing, prayers of hope, prayers of restoration, prayers of provision. And we thank you, Lord God, that you hear them all. In Jesus' name, amen. What's important to you? What's a priority in your life? What is guiding you, leading you, challenging you? What's important? In Matthew 6, 33, I would like to think that this is important. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness and all these things will be given to you as well. Let us seek first his kingdom. Let us seek the things of God. Some of you came to church today because you felt like it. Others came today because, oh, well, we'd better go. Anyone? Let's go and hear what they're doing today. Others, you are here because you have made meeting together a priority of your life. You have chosen to gather here to worship. You have chosen to be part of this church community. You've made it a priority. It doesn't matter if you're online or whatever. Or you, You've made the choice, hey, I'm going to gather with God's people today. Plenty of things you could be doing. Amen? Yeah. No doubt now you're thinking of them because I've mentioned them. <laughs> oh, that's right. I left the washing in the washing machine. Yeah. Because this is the day that the Lord has made. And we will rejoice and we will be glad in it and we've made it a priority to gather with His people. In the Old Testament, the tent of meeting or the place where God dwelt was put in the centre of their camp. God was at the centre. God was our priority. And in the book of Numbers, hard to find in the Old Testament there, come in a couple and you'll find it. In chapter 2, verse 17, we read, Then the tent of meeting... And the camp of the Levites was set out in the middle of the camps. And they will set out in the same order as they encamp, each in their own place under their standard. Now all the tribes would face the centre where God dwelt, where His presence were and they were encamped around we could say the presence of God because God was in the center put God in the center of your life let him lead you and guide you place Jesus at the center of it all let him lead us and guide us sometimes we get so worried sometimes we get so scattered Sometimes we get so confused. Did God want me to do this thing or that? Take that job, do that thing? Does he want me over here or, or over there? 
And we don't commit to anything. Just a lot of movement and action with good intentions. Keep God in the middle of everything. And when He moves, let us readjust ourselves as well and move with Him. Let God guide you. Sometimes God will take us the long way around anybody. A number of years ago, he moved us from Perth to Mackay. That was the long way around. With six, six, six of us actually, yes. <laughs> Four children and two adults. And we had Nola's parents with us from, I think, Perth to Melbourne anyway. So that was fun. Sometimes God will take us the long way around because He needs to show us stuff along the way. He needs to show us what we need to learn, what we need to see, what we need to understand, what we need to be challenged about along the journey. God's people were in the wilderness for 40 years. He was testing them. He was training them. He was annoyed with them. He was pleased with them. They did the right thing. They did the wrong thing. They went back and forth and round and round, training them to faithfully follow and make Him a priority, which I'm encouraging you today about. Make God a priority. When the cloud moved... They moved. When it stopped, they stopped. But there was no pattern. It might have been a day, might have been a month, might have been a year, might have been a few weeks. It was unpredictable. But when God moved, they needed to be ready to move. And they actually didn't really travel that far for those 40 years, for those that know your Bible. But God was teaching them the importance of obedience and the importance of trust and the importance that things may not go right all the time. But I love this in Deuteronomy 29 up there for you. Yet the Lord says, During those 40 years that I led you through the wilderness, your clothes not wear out, nor did the sandals on your feet. You ate no bread and drank no wine or other fermented drink, no you caught. Oh, that's a pity. I did this so that you might thanks to those that are listening. I did I did this so that you might know that I am the Lord your God. I did this so you would know that you can count on me, that I am Jehovah Jireh, your provider. That I will not let you down, that I will lead you and guide you, and that flows on into our Christianity today. God will not let us down. He might use our fears, our confusion, our uncertainty. Why? Because He's building up our trust. My trust. Your trust. To trust Him, follow Him, rely on Him. And He asks us, am I a priority in your life or not? Are you serious about this or not? Let us look for God's goodness. Look for His goodness and you will find it. If we look for good, I promise you, you will always find it. Also, if you're looking for bad, you'll find it. If you're looking for what's wrong, you can find it. If you don't want to like people, well, you can find, you can find some of those. You want to be annoyed at God? Well, you can, I suppose. If you don't want to like the church, you can find a reason not to like His church. But if you want to see God, if you want to see His faith, if you want to see the best, you can. If you want to see His mercy, if you want to see His grace, if you want to see His salvation and receive that, you can find it. 
Open his word. Open your eyes. Open your life. If you want to find the good, you can find it. Don't be a vulture, always picking at the dead things. But let us be a hummingbird and enjoy the sweet and good things of God. I promise you this, you'll always find what you're looking for. So what attitude, what priority are we making, God? What attitude are we, are we projecting? You can live in a sad, depressed, negative mindset if you want to. But if you want to look and see where God is working, you will find Him. For He is still powerful. He is still changing lives. He is still good in this place. And He is still leading His people and His church. So let us all work with that. Let us drop our stones and walk away and let Jesus find you in a place of surrender. John 8, 9, sorry, 10 and 11. Jesus straightened up and asked her, woman, where are they? If you know the story, has no one condemned you? No one, sir, she said. Then neither do I condemn you. Jesus declared, go now and leave your life of sin. Does no one condemn you? And she says, no, not one. And then Jesus totally changes the narrative of our lives. When he says, then neither do I condemn you. Go and sin no more. Now that wasn't Jesus letting anybody off the hook. It was Jesus giving us a peek into what he had come to do and so that we understand it more fully now, the work of redemption and the price that's required for you and me to get out from under this condemn condemnation that came down from a holy and just God and into the story of righteousness where condemnation is now woven out of our story, woven out by the mercy and grace and goodness of Jesus Christ. I don't condemn you either. Because where this all took place is on the mountain of olives. And we know later in the story that Jesus is also going to be on the mountain of olives like he often was. But this is the last night. And he's going to once again bow down to the ground and praying before his death. Father, if there's there any other way, take this cup. Let this cup pass from me. I'm asking for that. Nevertheless, any other way. But let it be so. Not my will, but your will be done. Why was he praying this? Because he knew what was to come. And he knew what was in that cup. What was in the cup was the adultery of the woman. What was in the cup were the sins of her accusers. What was in the cup was every person who had gone their own way and fallen short and rejected God. What was in the cup was my stuff and your stuff. And he stands there and asks the woman, Where are your accusers? And it said earlier, Whoever is without sin can't cast that first stone and condemn you. He could have said, All right. You all head home because I'm going to pick up the first stone, the first rock and do this myself because I am the only one here without sin. Yes, it's me, the only one. 
But I didn't come to condemn this world as John 3, 17 reminds us. He didn't come to condemn the world. But God did not send His Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through Him. And have you made that a priority in your life? The salvation of Jesus Christ. So what's important? What's a priority? How will you frame the good, the bad, the confusing, the disappointing? How will you receive his love? Put him at the center of your life. Up on the screen there we have a picture. You can't control what happens to you, but you can control how you frame it. How will you frame it? How will you frame your journey with God? How will you frame the disappointments? How will you frame the triumphs and the joys? For God did not send His Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through Him. What's important for you? God bless. Amen.